This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to Advent of the Archmage. Chapter 641, Sovereign of Light. This is problematic. Link sprawled on the ground of the valley, thinking of the information he'd gotten from the two demons. The Void Fairy actually had more than 3,000 legendary demons. Nozama wanted to come personally to deal with him. Even more shocking, these guys were still looking for the mysterious gear and had come here. This place was extremely close to the mysterious gear. If they searched carefully here, they would definitely find it. What would happen if they found the gear? Link didn't know if they would receive undefeatable power or shocking wisdom. All he knew was that he couldn't let Nozama find it. But what should I do now? Link had no clue. While racking his brain, his magic servant Dadera walked over with a thick magic book in his hands. Master, I've prepared what you've requested. Get closer and read for me. Link's eyes rolled and looked down at Dadera. He remained sprawled on the ground. It wasn't their first meeting, but whenever Dadera had to approach this huge beast, he would still get nervous. He forced himself to around 50 feet from Link and started reading. The realm we live in is called Federa. In ancient times, it was a barren land. There was no water, no air, and no life. One day, a great god arrived. He saw that the world was so quiet and decided to add life to it. He spent seven days in total to create the creatures. Master, this is the myth spread all over the continent. I cannot ensure the validity. I personally do not believe it. Link didn't agree or disagree. He huffed out some air, creating a breeze in the valley. Keep reading. Don't add your useless nonsense. Your knowledge isn't enough to determine the truth of history. Dadera felt insulted, but he didn't dare object. Licking his chapped lips, he continued, after God created life, he stayed in Federa for countless years. He arranged the order for the world to operate, and spread the written and spoken language. When he left, he pointed at the ancestors of humanity and said, from now on, you will rule the world in my place. Magic is the scepter I give you. The myth was very rough. There was a handful of myths similar to this in Fireman. Most of the details couldn't be believed, but there were still some traces left behind by history. Here, Link asked, what was the god called? He never said his true name. However, the ancient people called him the Sovereign of Light. Whenever he appeared, he was covered in endless light. People couldn't see his features clearly either, Dadera said. Sovereign of Light? Link was slightly surprised. The Sovereign of Light was similar to Fireman's God of Light. Piaz had also said that the mysterious gear in the Sea of Void was enveloped by light. Could there be a special relationship between these three? However, there still wasn't enough information. Link couldn't conclude anything yet. Continue, he ordered. After the god left, the ancestors used the god-given magic and quickly reached the top of the world. In the beginning, many believed that god would return and the ancestors were only temporarily protecting the world order for him. Thus, the world was very peaceful, and everyone lived happily. However, god never returned. Time passed, and the order broke apart. About 9,000 years ago, the first magic war erupted in Federa. Countless powerful magicians crowned themselves as Magic King. They fought each other to snatch the scepter given by the god. The Dark Ages lasted for 30 years. It was known as the War of the Kings. Oh? Is this a legend or history? Link was interested. This is true history, Dadera said. Where's the evidence? Link asked. Not only was Dadera a magician, but he was also a learned scholar. He knew everything about Fedara's history. As soon as Link asked, he replied, there are many ancient relics on the continent. The most well-known is the Stargazer's platform in the south. Ancient scholars observed the paths of stars there. There's a famous wall painting called Dawn of the Gods. Beneath it is an epic poem of 5,389 ancient words. It recorded the ancient war in detail. There are also three eternal magic seals on the Stargazer's platform and five fossilized bodies. This all proves that the War of the Kings had truly happened around 9,000 years ago. 
According to my research, the specific time should be around 9,155 years. It was a detailed reply. After hearing it, Link felt like he should visit the Stargazer's platform. Of course, he had to learn as much as he could about this world's magic before that. Thinking of this, Link said, continue the story. After that, I need to know about your magic. As you wish, Master. Dadera continued reading. While Link was focused on learning the specifics of Federa, Glynn was escaping with Franklon. He ran more than 1,000 miles without stopping and finally took a breather after reaching the heart of the Tron Kingdom. Just as he was about to rest, a voice came from the sky. Stop, demon. Glynn looked up. It was Protector Ramian who had been running toward the same direction. He looked a bit pathetic now. His clothes were torn, and his previously flawless hair had become messy. His pretty eyebrows drooped rather than arching up. It was obvious what had happened was a blow to his confidence. Protector, I am only someone summoned from another realm. Why can't you let me go? Glynn was scared. The other was legendary, after all. If they started fighting, he wouldn't do well. Ramian shook his head. No, no, no. I know you have other plans, but I'm not looking for trouble now. I want to know details about the Black Dragon. His power is too shocking. He surpasses all creatures that have appeared in the history of Federa. Even the ancient magic kings can't reach his level. He can't be a nameless figure. Demon, tell me his background. With that, Glynn was relieved. If this guy really wanted to find trouble, it would actually be hard for Glynn. This was much better. He couldn't say much about the Furred Lord though. Otherwise, judging from their conversation earlier on the battlefield, who knew what would happen? Thinking of this, Glynn said, Protector, I've only heard of his name before. He is truly powerful, but that was my first time fighting him, just like you. Oh? Ramian squinted at Glynn, face full of suspicion. Glynn had seen this kind of suspicion many times before. He cried out inwardly. That damn furred lord had perfectly destroyed the protector's confidence. The clash hadn't been as intense as he had thought. The protector had already started doubting Glynn and would try to prove his doubts. Adding the two demon traitors to the fact, they would probably be exposed soon. At this point, Nozama's mission would be impossible to accomplish. The wisest thing would be to give up on the summoning and return to the void to restart. It was highly possible that he would be badly punished, but it was still better than failing and dying here. Glynn was a decisive man. Once he made a decision, he would do it immediately without any delay. Of course, he had to find the right time to leave this realm. But since he had a decision, he didn't feel torn inside. Protector, he murmured. Of all the rumors I've heard of the Black Dragon, he's a cruel and tricky guy. Perhaps you think he's okay and you can communicate with him. But when he kills more than 100,000 lives in this world, you'll regret it. But less than 20 people died because of him in that battle, Ramian said, half trusting and half disbelieving. Less than 100 were injured. This doesn't match the name of a cruel tyrant. Ha, huh, I'm only telling you what I've heard. Whether you believe me or not has nothing to do with me. If you have the guts, you can go to the valley to ask him personally. Oh, I don't think I can stay in this realm any longer. After all, I'm just a summoned guest from another realm. Oh, then you can go. Thank you for the information. Also, this realm doesn't welcome you. Don't come back. If I meet you again, I will destroy you. Glynn shrugged. I hope we'll never meet. Ramian didn't think much. The summoning spell had ended, so returning to the void was normal. Thinking that he wouldn't get more information from the demon, he turned to leave. Perhaps it's time to go look for that black dragon, Ramian thought. The other hadn't caused great damage and instead went back to the mountains. The fighting could be put aside for now. He should at least figure out the other's motive. On the other hand, a short while after he left, Glynn grabbed Magician Franklin's neck. Mortal, I'm sorry, but I don't need you anymore. You, Franklin was shocked. Crack. Bone cracked, and Franklin's neck was turned into mush. 
He was dead instantly. He was Glyn's main summoner. Once he died, Glyn felt the realm's resistance against him multiply greatly. His level, 9 strength was now only level, 6. It didn't matter though. He wasn't going to stay in this realm for any longer. Using the resistance, Glyn cast a realm portal spell. Buzz. White light flashed. Using this power, Glyn felt himself shoot out of this damn realm. Everything blurred in his vision. A few minutes later, dark green vapor appeared before him. He was back in the sea of void. Nothing was restricting him anymore, and his power returned to level 15. The void's power rushed towards him, but he easily stopped it. After a while, a huge disk appeared around him. There was a flashing spatial coordinate below it. Glyn immediately sent his location. The white light flashed, and he was back inside the void fairy. Nozama's voice came. Glyn, you've disappointed me greatly. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to Advent of the Archmage. Chapter 642, God of Destruction, February 2nd. Glyn turned around and saw that Nozama was looking at him from his black skeletal throne. On both sides of his throne stood ten or so demons. These were all Nozama's most trusted subordinates. Some of them even posed a threat to Glyn's position as Nozama's second in command. The crowd of demons was smiling at him nastily. Glyn's heart was now racing in him. His knees gave way, and he fell to his knees unceremoniously. Master, I beg you. Please allow me to explain what I had to go through in that realm before you punish me. Speak then, said Nozama, nodding. He had always been a reasonable man, and Glyn was also one of his most competent subordinates. Glyn let out a sigh of relief. He then began recounting the moment he and his two underlings were summoned by the magicians of Troim into their realm, the Protector's appearance, which was subsequently followed by the Black Dragon Link's appearance, and finally, how the Black Dragon easily brought the Troim army to its knees. He did not leave out anything as he described in detail the power levels of all parties involved and what happened during the battle with the Black Dragon. When he was finished, Nozama frowned. You said that he just stood there, completely ignoring the level, 10 spell that was aimed at him. Are you sure he didn't cast a defensive spell on himself beforehand? No, I was closely observing him at the time. I did not sense any magical aura from him. I am sure of what I saw. The spell simply slid off him like rainwater. Glyn was a level, 15 magician. Though his power had been heavily suppressed back then, his observational skills were not at all affected. He definitely could not have imagined what he saw with his own eyes. Things did not look good. The fact that a level, 10 spell had no effect whatsoever on Link suggested that he was now more powerful than anyone had anticipated. Even Nozama could not achieve such a feat. From Glyn's account, Nozama estimated that his power would be reduced to at most level, 10 if he were to enter that realm without any summoner splitting the burden of the dimensional rejection with him. Even he would be decimated by a level, 10 magical attack at that point. Nozama tapped a restless finger on one of the armrests of his throne. All the other demons were now holding their breaths, fearing that their breathing might distract their master. Glyn remained kneeling on the ground, not even daring to take a breath himself. His heart was now pounding in anticipation of whatever punishment Nozama had in store for him. Seconds passed agonizingly. Ten minutes later, Nozama spoke once more, the Lord of Ferd never ceases to surprise me. I imagine he still has a few tricks up his sleeve if he thinks he can venture into the Sea of Void on his own. And now he's holed up in this backwater realm. Knowing him, he may even stay there for a hundred more years if he has to. Picking a fight with him there may not be a wise move. If that's the case, we'll just have to return to our previous objective, finding the Seal of Light. Yes, master. All the demons nodded around him. Nozama then looked at Glyn again. As for you, Glyn, you've been a loyal servant of mine, perhaps ten times more loyal than those traitorous imbeciles Gaul and Gamua. You're also a lot more intelligent than those two. You've proven yourself to be an invaluable asset. Stand up, you are not at fault for the failure of this mission. Glyn was overjoyed. Many thanks, master. Many thanks. In the past, 
Nozama would usually conjure some cruel punishment to deal with those who failed him. This was the first time he had forgiven someone for his failure. It would seem that Glyn had made the right choice. Nozama then turned to look out of one of the portholes on the side of the Void Fairy. A vast realm flickered in the distance outside the fairy. He smirked. Another world waiting to be conquered. I'm coming, love. The Void Fairy let out a soft hum as it turned towards this new realm. Just then, something happened. The Dark Tutor Mycin shouted, Master, something's holding back the Void Fairy. We're completely paralyzed. What? What did you say? Nozama was stunned. What the Void Fairy lacked in power, it made up for in size. Even he would not be able to restrain such a huge vessel by himself. Who could be powerful enough to bring the entire Void Fairy to a halt? He immediately gave out his order. Activate the Dark Inferno. We'll burn whoever it is to a crisp. Before he could finish his sentence, a silky voice echoed in the vessel. Nozama, is this how you treat a friend? As Nozama puzzled over who it could be for a while, a dark red image flickered into being inside the cabin. The image was blurry at first. Then, it began to solidify into the form of an Agatha Naga. The Naga somewhat resembled the Naga priestess Molina. Swathed in layers of destructive aura, she had an air of austerity about her that Molina never had. Looking at her, Nozama drew a sharp breath. He stood up, took a few paces forward and then bowed deeply before the Naga. Exalted one, I did not expect to find you here. The Naga in question was the god of destruction. She had appeared before Nozama in her true form. The faint aura she was giving off was enough to suffocate every demon on board the Void Fairy. Even Nozama was under the impression that he would be disintegrated at any moment by her. A mortal in the face of a legendary was akin to an ant about to be stomped on by an elephant. In the Sea of Void, Nozama was now feeling just as insignificant as said ant in the face of a divine master like the god of destruction. I did not expect to find you floating out here as well, said the Naga, chuckling. She then turned to look at the realm outside the fairy's porthole. I assume he's somewhere in there. Yes, yes he is. Nozama did not even have to guess who she was referring to. The Naga smiled coldly. This realm does feel potent. However, it is still young, and most of its rules are far from complete. It's also not under the protection of any god as far as I know. I'll open a portal for you, and all you have to do is go in there and get him out of it. Nozama was taken aback by her suggestion. Won't there still be a dimensional rejection? There will be, but I'll take on most of it for you. You will have level 14 power inside that realm as a result. Don't tell me you can't even handle such a simple task. If the Naga had come to him sooner with such an arrangement, Nozama would not have hesitated to pluck the Lord of Ferd out of the realm he was now hiding in. However, after hearing Glyn's account, he was not sure if he could handle Link even with level 14 power, especially when he had no idea how powerful the latter had become at this point. The God of Destruction gazed at him coldly. Cowardice is a quality most unbecoming of someone with 3,000 legendary demons at his disposal, Nozama. The demons on board the vessel looked at their master upon hearing this, waiting for an answer from him. Damn it! Nozama grounded his teeth. However, he was not in any position to resist the will of a divine master. Finally, he nodded. No, of course there won't be a problem. I'm just thinking what kind of torture I should subject the Lord of Ferd to when I get my hands on him. No, the God of Destruction strolled towards Nozama's throne and seated herself on it. She then stared down at the Lord of Deep and said, your job is to capture the Lord of Ferd alive. As for how he should be dealt with, that will be up to me to decide, not you. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to Advent of the Archmage. Chapter 643, Turn and Run. Federo Realm. Today was Link's second day in this realm, he was still familiarizing himself with it. There wasn't much in terms of history, and so, he'd learned most of it. Now, he was learning about Federo's magic. The magic here was unique, but Link was on the way towards the essence of power. Magician Dadara's level was quite low. He was only around level 8. 
Link had the advantage of his high level and was naturally fast at grasping low-level spells. In one afternoon, Link already learned most of the commonly used runes in this realm. Now, he was learning a level, 6 flame spell. Whoosh! A red fireball the size of a basketball appeared before Link's eyes. Using his thoughts, it disappeared and reappeared a few times. He could now control the spell on his whim. Beside him, Dad Era praised, Master, you learned so quickly. A mere mortal's trick. Link's voice was full of disdain, but it was an act. Inside, he thought this spell was very special. In Fireman, a fire spell under the legendary level would create an unstable and high-pressure ball of fire. To make a fireball, one had to use a spiral structure inside. Any relaxation would cause the spell to be cast incorrectly and have horrible consequences. The structure of this fireball was completely different. It didn't have any spirals inside. The outside was a transparent red sphere, like a crystal. At a glance, it looked like dragon power. While casting, it was easier to control than Fireman's Fireballs too. It made Link feel that it was a legendary fireball that involved fire principles. These magic runes are closer to the principles than Fireman's elemental runes. They aren't simple single realm principles either and are instead the common principles in the Sea of Void. Interesting. Disregarding the relationship between these spells and the mysterious gear, the characteristics were already enough for him to research deeply. These were his inner thoughts. Dad Era obviously didn't know. Hearing his words, he lowered his head and said humbly, Master, these are only immortal spells. They can't be compared to your supernatural power. Link didn't deny it. Continue, he said. Next spell. Yes, Master. Dad Era lifted the magic book and flipped to a new page to show Link another spell. Just then, Link suddenly said, wait, something happened. Dad Era was confused. He looked up and saw that the sky was clear blue. Looking around, there were only thick forests. The wind blew past the trees, and occasionally, there would be some bright chirps from birds. Everything seemed normal. Master, it looks normal? Dad Era didn't understand. Patience, mortal. Link had been lying on the ground, but now he'd half risen. Cocking his head, he listened. His eyes kept looking around, waiting for changes in the environment. Dad Era still didn't understand, but he knew his power wasn't enough. He could only hold his breath and wait. The valley was silent and the seconds ticked by. After around 10 minutes, the sky changed drastically. It had been blue like a pure sapphire. Now, it suddenly had dark red clouds. At first, the clouds were sparse but thickened within a few minutes, covering the sun completely. The clouds kept spinning like a huge vortex. After more than 10 minutes, a giant dark red pillar of light suddenly shot out from it. The pillar connected the sky and ground. It was extremely similar to when the God of Destruction Saint had appeared. Link's heart clenched, and the feeling of danger gripped him. Just then, two figures sprinted over while yelling, Master, something happened. Link looked over. They were the two demons who had signed the soul contract with him. Their original summoning contracts had been nullified, and the one bearing the realm's resistance had gone. They were only at the beginning of level, 6 now. Sprinting over, Succubus Gamua, who was at the front, panted heavily and said, Master, things are bad. I can feel Nozama's aura. He said before that he'd come to deal with you personally. He's here now. Bladed Demon Gaul's eyes were terrified, and his body shook. Master, what should we do? We're going to die. We're really gonna die. Every demon from the abyss knew very well how horrifying Nozama was. This lord's power was undefeatable, and he knew countless ways of torturing someone. Demons were a mortal's nightmare, but to the demons, Nozama was an eternal nightmare. Now, they'd betrayed Nozama, but Nozama had come to them. The two demons were close to breaking down. Nozama has actually come? Link looked at the dark red pillar in the near distance. It's probably not just him. The God of Destruction is also looking from outside the realm. This is bad. 
Nozama was at the pinnacle of level 19, only one step away from the divine level. Now, he dared to come into this realm to find Link. Even if his power was somewhat restricted, but he would still be more powerful than Link. If they fought directly, Link barely had any chance. However, he also had some advantages. As the mastermind behind Fireman's catastrophe, people had researched Nozama's power. He displayed many tricks in the game, such as Misfortune Curse, Finger of Death, Eternal Nightmare, and other legendary techniques. People knew all about them, Link obviously did too. Nozama was extremely powerful, but he still had flaws. As the Lord of the Deep for so many years, he had many followers and never had to fear anyone. Thus, his skills at escaping, especially spells at running, didn't match his power level. Seems like I should run now, Link thought. He couldn't escape from the realm because the God of Destruction and Void Fairy were most likely waiting for him outside. He would die if he left. He could only run circles around Nozama in this giant realm. Thinking of this, Link activated the transmission spell. A few flashes of white light appeared. The six magicians who'd summoned Link were brought over. The two demons immediately realized that Link was preparing to run. Terrified, Gamua collapsed and crawled on her knees. Clutching one of Link's dragon toes, she cried, Master, take me with. Wah, take me with. I'll serve you with my all. I'll do anything you want. Wah. She transformed while crying. She put away her scales, revealing crystal white human skin. Her body had all the right curves and was extremely hot. Demons never had bad bodies, especially demons that mesmerized people with their looks. When they used all their power to attract people, they were enough to cause nosebleeds. When the bladed demon saw how shameless the succubus was, he was furious. But as a bladed demon who focused on combat ability, he had nothing to show. He could only lament that his parents didn't give him good looks. But he still tried his best. He rushed towards Link's other dragon toe. Master, I'm willing to become your sharpest blade. I'll kill anyone you want. If you want me to torture someone, I'll make it so that even his mother can't recognize him. Just take me with you please. Link glanced at the two demons. His eyes finally landed on the succubus Gamua who was purposely showing off her power. He didn't care about her figure, it had no effect on him. He was thinking back to the mana waves from her transformation. The waves were obscure, hidden, and strange. It felt oddly familiar to Link. Thinking closely, it was similar to when he transformed into dragon form. The dragon form is a type of magic form. Could a demon's body be the same? Link was intrigued. He moved his claws and grasped the two demons. With his current dragon form, these two weighed nothing. They wouldn't affect his speed at all. After escaping and getting temporary peace, he wanted to study the structure of the demon body. Of course, right now, he had to run. Ignoring the demon's praises, Link spread his wings and flapped. At the same time, he activated the void walk. It had been created just for escaping. He shot into the air like an arrow. His speed was extreme. After reaching level 13, his maximum speed had lifted. He was also in dragon form now. His streamlined body was born for flight. Pairing these two, he reached about one mile per second. Under this extreme speed, even Link felt his vision blur. Looking back, he saw the light pillar shrink quickly. It was about to disappear from his line of sight. Fifteen seconds later, the light was gone. Then an indescribable sense of danger surged in Link's heart. He knew that Nozama was watching him now. Eyes turning, Link saw a flying black dot around 25 miles from him. Looking closely, he saw a middle-aged man with black hair and red eyes. He was also flying in the air at a speed just a bit slower than Link. It's Nozama, it's the Lord of the Deep. He's coming. Gamua yelled. Link obviously knew it was Nozama. He'd dealt with this guy many times in the game. In the storyline mission, he'd even died thousands of times. Nozama's appearance was carved into his mind. The two chased each other like this for around three seconds. 
Then Link realized that if this continued, Nozama would definitely catch up. The side effects from forcefully activating the time spell were still present, his power recovered too slowly. Flying at this extreme speed used up a lot of energy. Nozama's power recovery rate was very high, and he wouldn't feel any fatigue like this. Estimating with his current speed, Link could fly at top speed for around 10 hours. If he couldn't lose Nozama within that time, it would be bad. Nozama clearly knew this. He followed behind Link calmly. After three more seconds, the distance between them only widened around 300 feet. Link's vision suddenly flashed. It was a mission. Activate mission series, Danger, Lord of the Deep. Mission 1, Escape. Mission content, temporarily escape from Nozama's pursuit and find a safe refuge. Mission reward, 1 energy crystal. Energy crystal. Level, 18 energy core. Effect, it contains indescribably pure power and can help the user break through their current power limit. Link sorely needed this. Unfortunately, he could only get it after completing the mission. It couldn't help him now. He could only focus on flying. He was waiting for the distance between them to increase before finding a place to hide. While flying, the corner of his vision flashed with white light. Shocked, he looked over and saw someone running toward him at high speed. Looking closely, he saw that it was Ramion, the protector he'd scared away earlier. Why was he here? While Link was confused, Ramion had gotten closer. He wasn't as fast as Link, so he used a sound transmitting spell. Dragon, if you trust me, take me with. I know a place where you can hide from that demon. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to Advent of the Archmage. Chapter 644, Have a Taste of My Abyssal Dish. One quarter. Link eyed the protector. There was a look of urgency on his face. He did not sense any hostility from him. After hesitating for a second, Link decided to believe him. He then flew towards Ramion. When he was close enough, he extended out a claw and caught hold of both the protector and his unicorn. Lead the way. Beating his wings back powerfully, Link returned to full speed once more in the air. We need to go back. The hiding place I was talking about is behind us, said Ramion. Link tightened his grip on the protector and said suspiciously, are you sure? He looked behind him. All that he could see was the hazy red sky. Nozama was nowhere to be found. Judging by the energy fluctuations the Lord of the Deep was giving off, Link estimated that he was now 60 miles away from his pursuer. Even if he was somehow able to avoid Nozama as he turned back, he would still need to expend a large amount of energy. This was no different from hurling oneself directly into the jaws of death. Ramion could feel Link's claw closing in on him. Fearing that he might be squeezed to death by the dragon, he quickly erected a force field around himself. He then said, Dragon, I'm the protector of the Federo realm. I have no reason to deceive you and less reason still to help those demons. Link was reassured somewhat by his words. Still, the question remained, how should they avoid Nozama in order to reach this hiding place that the protector mentioned? Not only did they need to circumvent Nozama, but they also needed to do so without spending too much energy or taking a hit along the way. What should I do? Thought Link as he considered his options. He sensed that Nozama's current power was probably around level 13. There was no way he was level 19 right now. If that had been the case, Link would already be dead by now. With level 13 power, Nozama might not be able to break through his magically resistant dragon scales with magical attacks. However, he might be able to do so if he came at Link with physical attacks. One of the more intriguing qualities of dimensional rejection was that it only affected the energy output of extradimensional beings. It had absolutely no effect on one's physical characteristics. For instance, Link could only use level 10 battle techniques and spells at the moment. However, his dragon scales still retained their level 13 hardness and level 18 magical resistance. Only an attack with a power which exceeded the level of his scales or underwent an elemental change would be able to pierce through his dragon body's defenses. The same could be said about Nozama. 
However, Nozama's demon body in the weapon he was equipped with was now at an overwhelming level, 19. Link's dragon scales offered no more protection for him than a layer of paper mache would against either one of them. Since that was the case, Link no longer saw the point in remaining in his dragon form. His dragon body was more of a hindrance to him at this point, as his pursuer would be able to hit such a massive target with ease from a distance. Link then began to descend towards a more precipitous spot in the mountains, where the trees were also thicker. When he was 50 feet in the air, Link retracted his dragon form. Retracting a dragon form with a wingspan of more than 100 feet was a tricky affair which involved a meticulous use of spatial magic. Ramiyan saw the dragon scales begin to glow and then fold upon themselves rhythmically as the dragon's body shrank. The entire process was so intricate that none of the magicians present were able to keep up with its every step without feeling a throbbing headache in his or her head. Ramiyan also tried to observe the folding of Link's dragon scales. He was able to last a bit longer than Dadera. According to the ancient legends, dragonification is supposed to be a form of magic. A high level one at that, apparently. I can't even begin to wrap my head around it, thought Ramiyan when he finally turned his gaze away. Five seconds later, Link had retracted most of his dragon form. He was now in his half-dragon form, which was approximately seven feet tall. Dragon scales still covered his body, giving the impression that he was wearing an exquisite set of armor. Link's transformation had also extended to his ode of a full moon sword. It was now covered in a layer of silver-black dragon scales. Only its sharp edge remained. When his transformation was complete, the group of people he had been carrying with him landed in the forest beneath him. As soon as he landed, Link raised his sword and was about to cast an invisibility spell over all of them when suddenly Ramiyan said, Allow me. My power has been recognized by the Federo realm. I can easily camouflage us here. Link stopped. Ramiyan stabbed his wand out and muttered, Earth, sky, tree, open up your loving embrace and grant us protection. A red, golden and green light issued out from the tip of his wand. Like smoke, it rapidly spread out in the air before settling on everyone around Ramiyan. When the radiant mist settled upon them, Link felt as if everyone had evaporated around him. He looked around him and saw that everyone was still visible. He could still see Ramiyan, the six summoners and his two demon attendants around him, but he could not feel any of their auras. Link soon realized that they were still giving off their auras. Romian spell had simply camouflaged them such that they felt no different than the trees, animals, and rocks around them. Seeing the look of confusion on Link's face, Ramiyan explained, this is the power of the elements. In order to receive their aid, one must first obtain their recognition. Do they also recognize extra-dimensional beings? asked Link. Ramian shook his head. Maybe. I don't know. It all depends on what the elements are thinking at the moment. Sensing Romian's reluctance to say anything more on the subject, Link decided not to press him any further. He then felt for Nozama's aura and was able to determine that he was now 30 miles away from them. He needed to move fast. Ramian said, let's turn back. We shouldn't move too fast, or we'll give our locations away. Link did not object to this. Ramian was a native of this realm after all. Under his guidance, all of them began retracing their steps. After walking for half a minute, a sound like thunder rang out in the air above them. It was a sonic boom, a phenomenon which usually happened in the wake of an object flying at top speed through the air. Nozama had arrived. Link looked up in the air and saw a black dot flying over them 2,000 feet in the air. Romian's elemental invisibility spell was extremely effective. Nozama did not seem to notice their presences on the ground as he sped past them. He then let out a sigh of relief. However, Link noticed that Nozama had stopped moving forward and was now circling in the sky, just above the spot where Link and the others had landed moments ago. The two demons had also noticed this. They were now trembling so fiercely that they could not even hold their weapons properly. Had it not been for the fact that Link had forced them to sign an inviolable soul contract with him, the two demons would have already run back to their former master at the drop of a hat in order to beg for his forgiveness. Dadera and the others darted anxious looks at Link and Ramiyan from time to time. These two possessed power far greater than any of them. 
whether they would be able to escape Nozama's terrible pursuit would be entirely up to them. Ignore him. He won't be able to sense us here. Let us move on, said Ramiyun. Link nodded. The group trudged on forward. During that time, Link observed Nozama's every move from the corner of his eye as the demon circled in the sky. He did not dare look at him directly, for fear of making eye contact with Nozama. Still, Link was able to see Nozama clearly from 2,000 feet away without needing to strain his eyes, thanks to his dragon vision. Even the slightest shift in Nozama's facial expression did not escape his notice. Back in the previous game world, Link had confronted Nozama more times than he cared to count. Through his confrontations, he now knew exactly what the demon was thinking and what his next move would be. The game's developers had even made painstaking efforts to give this final boss a more lifelike quality. From his observations, Link could tell that this Nozama who was now flying in the sky before him was an exact copy of the Nozama back in the game world. Even their flight patterns were indistinguishable from one another. Link was able to predict what was going through Nozama's mind and what spell he was going to cast from his every move and every change in his expression. As they walked on for another half minute, Link noticed that Nozama had suddenly stopped moving in the air. In the next second, a sonorous voice called out from the sky. Link, I know you're hiding in these woods. Since you still insist on playing this game of hide and seek with me, I guess I have no choice but to let you have a taste of this dish I've prepared especially for you, straight from the abyss. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to Advent of the Archmage. Chapter 645, Is It Really Over Now? As soon as he heard Nozama's words, Link was instantly shocked. Whenever Nozama said this in the game, it meant that he would cast the large-scale attack spell, Storm of Death. Storm of Death. Level, 19 Legendary Spell. Effect, Spell Unique to Nozama. It uses the heavily chaotic power of the Abyss to create countless high-speed vortices. The countless vortices then form a giant magic vortex that stretches as far as one can see. Everything inside the vortex is crushed to powder. Note, when the windstorm appears, death follows. In the foreign Fidero, this spell was only around level 13, but it was still a terrifying force. Under this spell, around 5,000 miles of forest would be destroyed. Even if they didn't die, they would still have nowhere to hide. Ramian saw Link's strange expression and hurriedly asked, what, is he really powerful? Link nodded tersely while his mind whirred. By now, Nozama's body had already changed. Black light shone around him. The light surged from all directions and rushed towards his body. They were so fast that these lights seemed to form a whirlpool too. In the game, it took three seconds to cast the Storm of Death. It didn't give Link much time to react. A second later, Link knew he couldn't keep hesitating. He had to leave now. Turning towards Ramyan, he asked, is it north? Yes, that direction. Ramyan pointed somewhere northwest. Link's power surged, and he used a teleportation spell. White light flashed, covering them all. Buzz. The light disappeared, but they were still there. What's wrong? Ramyan was shocked. He knew this spell, but it was actually ineffective now. Link grew serious. The space is locked. There's no time. He's going to cast the spell. While speaking, Link's back trembled. A pair of dragon wings more than 30 feet wide opened. They curled around everyone present and covered them, forming a sealed dragon wing shield. Almost at the same time, Nozama's voice mixed with aggressive aura yelled, let death devour all. Link looked up. The entire sky was black. It was afternoon, but it seemed to be night. In the dark and sunless sky, Nozama suddenly reached out, pressing downward. Boom. Countless dark purple vortices appeared out of nowhere. They spread, covering Link's vision. Whoosh, whoosh. Death, destruction, devour. The wind screamed and had countless hoarse roars mixed in. Listening closely, one could hear many chilling wails. It was as if there was a deep abyss before them, filled with countless miserable souls trying to escape. Their freedom was restricted by something and could only reach a handout, 
grappling and dragging the creatures living in the light to the dark abyss to taste the misery together. In this windstorm, mountains were flattened, trees were crushed, and stones were pulverized. An instant later, the wind pressed down on Link's wings. That moment, Link felt boundless pressure weighing down on him, trying to crush him. He couldn't do anything or even budge. He could only grit his teeth and bear it. The crystallized dragon scales were abnormally tough. They were immune to all spells under level 18. This spell from Nozama was only at level 14. Because of the large scale, Link felt pressure, but it still couldn't break through the wing's protection. One second, two seconds, three. The windstorm was still raging. Outside the wings, tidal waves crashed, and the storm ravaged the world. Inside the wings, it was quiet and calm like a safe refuge. The people protected by the wings, mortal magician Dadera, the demons, and protector Ramiyan, were all shocked by Nozama's crazy power. They were also surprised by Link's tough body. Both Nozama and the dragon all had a power unimaginable by mere mortals. Ten seconds later, the windstorm started weakening. A bit later, the storm subsided. Link opened his wings and looked at its surface. It was covered with all types of dust. He shook his wings, and the dust fell down. The wings were completely undamaged. The surface was only a bit hot. They'd been surrounded by tall mountains and forests. Looking around, he saw that it had now turned into a huge plain. All that remained was scorched black dirt with dark aura rising up from it. The only living things were the grass and flowers in the six-foot-wide area around Link. But under the corrosion of the dark aura, they were quickly wilting. With nowhere to hide, Link's group was exposed to Nozama. Nozama slowly descended. He smiled faintly, but his blood-red eyes were still cold. You hid well, Ferd Lord. My spell couldn't break through your scales. You always surprise me. As he spoke, a black sword appeared in his hands. It was thin and narrow, only five centimeters wide but six feet long. The sword's back was black and didn't reflect any light while the blade was silver. When he brandished the sword, one could only see a silver streak. Link recognized it. It was the weapon Nozama was proudest of, Heroic Calamity. Hero Calamity. Level 19 Legendary Weapon. Effect, incredibly sharp. Incredibly light. Incredibly fast. Note, for millenniums, everyone who had died by this sword had once been praised as a hero. Seeing this sword, Link felt like he'd truly met a great enemy. Lord of the Deep Nozama was at the pinnacle of level 19, but he wasn't the only one in the world. Later in the game, glorious warlord Avatar, half-elf Eliard, and human Kanorse had all reached similar levels. However, of everyone at the legendary level, Nozama was at the top. He was truly the first of all legendary figures. In the game, these three had all fought against Nozama. In the end, the glorious warlord had fallen, Kanors had died, and Iliard had come away badly hurt. These great costs had only injured Nozama instead of killing him. Nozama had lived for too long. He'd completely grasped the secrets of power. He was an expert in all spells and battle techniques. He could easily use any technique. Anything he had was precious and world-shaking. He also had countless demon followers. In the realm, he could definitely be known as invincible. If he insisted on staying inside the realm, even a god couldn't do anything to him. Now, Link had to personally face this man. Even though he had so much battle experience, he still felt horrible pressure. The pressure came from the other's power. Link was at level 10, while Nozama was most likely at level 14. He was completely defeated in terms of power. He still had some Omni points to buy higher level spells, but he didn't have enough power to cast them. They were useless. It was hopeless. Thud. Nozama landed and looked at the people beside Link. The six magicians are probably your summoners, right? They help bear the realm's resistance, so you can have legendary pinnacle power. Even so, there's no reason for them to keep living. With that, the magicians, including Dadera, collapsed. Not only that, 
their bodies instantly started decaying. Puss oozed, and maggots came out. They didn't die yet, they could only watch their bodies rot. This was terrifying, and they all wailed. Master, save me, save me. Link was their last bit of hope, but Link was helpless. He didn't even know how Nozama had cast the spell. Their difference was too large. Regardless of whether it was power itself or Nozama's power, they couldn't be compared. Looking at Link, Nozama smiled. Young man, there's no need to feel sad for them. You'll quickly be in the same situation, no need to feel humiliated either. When I was your age, I was still a loser in the capital who spent his days drinking an F asterisk king. But you're already qualified to stand before me. That's a great honor. Capital? Drinking an F asterisk king? Those two phrases made Link's heart twitch, but he didn't have time to think now. Once the summoners died, the realm's resistance towards him would multiply tenfold. His power would be greatly restricted, he would only be at level 6. Faced with Nozama in level 14, it was like an ant trying to shake a tree. There was no chance. Nozama didn't hurry. He smiled at the two demons. Gaul and Gamua, you two didn't disappoint me. Surrendering temporarily for survival is normal. Us demons are always like that. But since you surrendered, you must pay for it. You too. Plop, plop. Before Nozama could finish, the two demons had already fainted from fear. How embarrassing. Nozama shook his head and prepared to act. Wait, another voice said. It was Ramion. Nozama looked over and chuckled. The so-called protector of the realm? You're pretty handsome, much better than when I was young. Sadly, from my youth to now, I've always hated people who look better than me. So, I'm sorry. He waved his sword carelessly towards Ramion. But halfway through, a sword blocked it with a ding. It was Link. He'd used all his power to block this hit. He was pressed onto the ground by the sword's power too. If his body wasn't at level 13, he would have died on the spot from this force. Feeling the difference between their power, even the determined Link felt a shred of despair. Will it really end now? This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to Advent of the Archmage. Chapter 646, I will give you a most honorable defeat, March 4th. Nozama smirked when he saw Link blocking a hit from his sword. He then asked, Link, you barely knew the man. What's the point in saving him, anyway? Link was already prepared to die at this point. Even when he was about to be crushed under the weight of Nozama's sword, he still managed to smile as he said, I've always been there to stop you at every turn since the day I entered the fireman realm, haven't I? Why stop now? Nozama nodded, somewhat stunned. He did not expect such a reply from him, given the circumstances. Indeed. You are also my daughter's husband, which naturally makes me your father-in-law. If you ask me, you kneeling down before me is something that is long overdue. He uttered every word calmly, confident that Link would not be able to retaliate from such an awkward position even if he wanted to. He's not wrong, I guess, thought Link. A shame really, that I wasn't able to give you a grandchild. Anger slowly began to rise in Nozama. He pressed his sword down even more, making Link bend over backwards awkwardly beneath him. He then said coldly, who knows? Maybe you already have planted your seed. When the time is right, I might bring both mother and child to my palace. Don't worry, I'll make sure to take good care of them. Link was still able to maintain a calm exterior. That's not too bad. Regardless of whether they end up good or evil, at least I'll have a descendant. They also won't have to live out their lives as mere commoners when I'm gone. Maybe when they're of age, maybe they'll even replace you as the Lord of the Deep. Enough. Nozama exerted even more pressure on his sword. There was now a manic glint of bloodlust in his eyes. No one can replace me. No one can defy me. I am the Abyss Eternal King, and soon, I will claim all the realms in existence as my own. As for you. The Lord of the Deep lowered his gaze at Link as the latter struggled to hold out against the weight of his sword. He smiled cruelly. I won't kill you. 
I will grant you the pleasure of experiencing eternal torment as the god of destruction's prisoner. I'll even let you watch me subject your wife to every horrendous form of torture I can think of as I march on to glory. You're out of control, Nozama, said Link. He now had difficulty saying his words. The power Nozama was exerting on him through his sword had reached an unbearable point. However, he was still able to remain calm inside. It was as if he had transcended the physical concerns of the living and no longer felt any fear towards Nozama's threats on his life. Seeing the crazed look on Nozama, Link went on, during the ancient times of firemen, masters like you used to be a dime a dozen. A wise man once told me that the physical is simply an extension of the mind. Pain is merely an illusion. A person's rise and fall is as transient as any other experience in one's life. If I fail now, there will be others who will succeed me. There will always be a new lord of Ferd to replace me when I'm gone. Nozama, you will never win. Nozama was stunned. His grip slackened considerably around the handle of his sword. Through the silvery glow that Link's eyes were giving off, Nozama could see that his eyes did not waver one bit. Link was not saying all this in an effort to put on a brave face. He actually meant every word. The physical is simply an extension of the mind. Have you really reached that state of mind? How is that possible? Nozama was now too surprised to maintain a firm grip on his sword. He had lived far longer and seen more than the average mortal. Though he had come across countless metaphysical concepts in his lifetime, he had yet to enact even one of them. He simply could not even if he wanted to. For instance, the state of mind that Link mentioned was something Nozama had been trying to achieve for a long time. Unfortunately, all his attempts had always ended in failure. As someone who was always quick to resort to violence and aggression, Nozama never could keep his emotions in check. His material desires had made him who he was today. However, they also constituted the greatest obstacle in his quest for enlightenment. Seeing the tranquility he had long coveted in the eyes of a 20-year-old man before him took Nozama completely by surprise. Nozama was able to regain much of his composure at this point. He looked at Link. The glint of bloodlust now flickered uncertainly in his eyes. You do have a remarkable gift, I'll give you that. There is a certain limberness to your mind which allows you to stay calm and focused, something my mind can't seem to manage. A shame really, that you have to meet your end here. Otherwise, you would have been the first mortal ever to enter the divine realm. Such a shame. Nozama shook his head as if he was actually regretting what he was about to do to Link. I suppose I shouldn't be too surprised about my daughter choosing you to be her spouse. After all, her bloodline ability allows her to make the best possible decision in any given situation. Oh, what a shame indeed. Nozama then took a step back, pulling his sword away from Link. He then looked at the young man before him and said, someone like you deserves an honorable defeat. Come, I'll give you a chance to come at me with everything you have. Link planted his ode of a full moon sword into the ground, leaning on it as he tried to stay upright. Nozama, do you know why I'm able to stay this calm? Echichem. Instinctively, Nozama felt that something was not right. In the next second, Link suddenly splayed his palm out behind him. A streak of light spread out from it, enveloping the protector Ramion and the two unconscious demons. Link had cast a teleportation spell on them. The most surprising thing happened. When the white light subsided, both Ramion and the demons had disappeared. They had been successfully teleported away. Impossible. I've sealed up the space here. You shouldn't be able to do that, said Nozama in disbelief. True, I wasn't able to cast any spatial spell just now. But you were prattling on for so long I just didn't have the heart to interrupt you. There was a look of satisfaction on Link's face. He was now ready to fight it out with Nozama to the bitter end. Oh, I see. So that's how it is. Nozama finally figured out what just happened. It's that protector. He took on some of the dimensional rejection that had been weighing you down. He's a legendary master as well as a protector recognized by this realm. By vouching for you, the realm naturally stopped rejecting you. If that's the case, I assume you are now at your full strength? Pristine realm essence power now flowed within Link. 
It then formed a thin crystalline layer around his body, giving him the appearance of a deified being. His power had returned to the mid-stages of level 13, while Nozama's was around the early stages of level 14. There was still a noticeable power gap between them, but Link was familiar with his opponent's strengths and weaknesses. There was still a chance for him to come out of this victorious. So it would seem, replied Link. His voice had taken on a metallic quality as a result of his return to his full strength. We probably can't cast any spells on each other from where we stand. It all comes down now to whose blade is quickest, mine or yours. Nozama's face did not show a hint of fear. He gently twirled his heroic calamity sword in his hand, tracing out a silver line in the air. He let out a terrible laugh. Ha ha ha, very well. As promised, I will let you experience a most honorable defeat. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to Advent of the Archmage. Chapter 647, You're Great, But You Talk Too Much. The barren, dark plains that had been ravaged by a spell earlier. Link and Nozama stood before each other, staring at one another. They were completely focused, but no one acted. Whoosh, whoosh. Wind blew by. The wind on the plains was dark. When it blew past the earth, it swept up a cloud of dark dust that obstructed their vision. Sea of Void. The god of destruction watched the situation in the realm. He couldn't help but swear inwardly, that stupid demon. He talks too much. It could have been done easily, but he just had to cause so many problems. Now, they two sides were practically equal. It was hard to say who could win. A few miles from the battlefield, there were three flashes of light. When the light subsided, three people appeared. They all collapsed with a plop, including Ramian. His face was horribly pale, and his lips were bloody. He was bearing the realm's resistance to Link by himself so Link could use his full power. The cost was that he practically had no power himself. Falling onto the ground, he immediately took out a runestone and added his remaining bit of power to it. The runestone glowed. Soon after, the wind rose around him, and his unicorn flew over. The two demons beside him were still unconscious. They'd really been scared silly. Both of them were wet underneath and smelled like sulfur. Clearly, they'd both pissed and sh asterisk t their pants. They're as brave as rats. So embarrassing. Ramian tied them up with a rope and hung them on the unicorn's back. Finally, he climbed up and patted the unicorn's neck. Let's go, my old friend. When they rose into the sky, Ramian glanced at the battlefield behind him. Dragon, he murmured, don't disappoint me. He would only be a burden if he stayed. Right now, he had to hurry back to the protector's land. Only there would he be truly safe. The moment the unicorn sped away, a gale appeared in Link and Nozama's battlefield. Whoosh! It swept up most of the black dust. It instantly covered the sky, blocking their vision. Almost at the same time, the two acted. Link was disadvantaged. His soul wasn't as strong as Nozama, but he knew more about Nozama than the man thought. His mind was also calmer. Both of their battle techniques had reached an extreme level. It could be said that both had their advantages. It was hard to say who would win. Link narrowed his eyes and lunged. He saw Nozama's blurred image. Listening to the wind around him, he determined Nozama's specific location from the changes in the wind. He stabbed his sword with only 70% of his power so he could adjust as needed. Suddenly, he heard a clang. Narrowing his eyes, he saw a silver light flash, coming at him like lightning splitting the turbidity. So fast. Link grew serious. He went to meet it with his long sword. That moment, he realized he wasn't fast enough. With his current speed, he would be stabbed before he could block. Changing plans, the sword's surroundings blurred. He'd activated a low-level force field. They were fighting physically, but both were still magicians. These low-level spells were like instincts. They could cast them without too much thinking and create great effects with their battle techniques. Link's force field had two goals. One was to speed up his sword, the other was to disrupt Nozama. 
An instant later, Nozama was affected. His usage of energy was no longer perfect. His sword slowed down a bit while Link sped up. Moments later, there was a piercing cling. Their weapons had clashed but didn't separate. They'd stuck together. Link and Nozama's power clashed within, and their weapons vibrated, creating rings of shockwaves in the air. When the shockwaves appeared, they lifted the black dust on the ground. The dust in the air thickened, their figures were barely visible. In the fight, Link was slightly weaker, but his heart was calm. He could multitask without making mistakes. Whenever he wasn't strong enough, he would use some small spells to help himself and disrupt Nozama. So within one second, they'd clashed dozens of times but were at a stalemate. One second later, Nozama realized he couldn't win and instantly became furious. He knew the fury would affect his mindset, but he couldn't control himself. When faced with ordinary opponents, these emotions would make him more violent. He could intimidate his opponent and use that to his advantage. In countless fights through the millennium, he'd used his aura to win every time. But this time, he knew it would be useless. One so-called aura was just a mental image. Link was able to see through these psychological things. If Nozama lost his temper, his opponent would be unbothered while his own mind would be affected. If his mind was affected, he wouldn't be able to multitask and use spells like Link. In a short-range fight, using spells seemed fancy. But if there was a mistake and a spell backlash happened, it would be disastrous. He could get killed instantly. His murderous intent grew, the bloody light in his eyes grew heavier. Nozama unconsciously let out guttural growls. But Link was still as calm as ever. He sensed Nozama's changes. The power from the man's sword grew stronger, but they were less condensed. The threat towards Link decreased. He could easily block them with some battle techniques. They clashed for one second, two seconds, three seconds. At eight seconds, they were still tied. I'm going to kill you. Nozama growled like a beast. He brought his sword down to force Link away. Link used this chance to retreat. At the same time, Nozama also stepped back and put his sword away to cast spells. He'd lost in terms of battle techniques. He could only defeat Link with spells. Regular spells were ineffective, but he could use a spell to activate a large-scale physical attack. For example, a meteor shower could smash Link to bits. But then something happened. Something moved in his vision, and a sword appeared. It was Link's attack. He had the same thought as Nozama and had acted earlier. Nozama had already retracted his sword. His sword was six feet long and couldn't turn easily. Link's sword appeared under his rib and he couldn't block it even if he had a sword. Seeing that he was about to be stabbed in the heart, Nozama growled and grasped the sword tip with his bare hands. Crack. He successfully grasped the sword, but blood flowed from the cuts on his palm. You're looking for death. Stimulated by the pain, Nozama's emotions went out of control. He forgot all about the God of Destruction's order to capture Link alive. As his hand flashed, a runestone appeared. He added in dark power, and the runestone glowed with a dark, watery halo. But at that time, he vaguely saw a white light in the dust before him. Then the sword in his hand disappeared. This discovery shocked Nozama awake. No, he's going to escape. Looking at the dark runestone in his hand, he immediately gave up on the destructive spell. Picking up his sword, he rushed forward. But 300 feet later, it felt wrong. He didn't think that Link would keep retreating. 300 feet was enough for Link to use a transmission spell and escape. As expected, when he finally rushed to Link, he only saw a shred of white light. Nozama, you're strong, and you're great, but you just talk too much. Crack. Nozama's fury erupted, and he crushed the runestone to powder. After that, he composed himself and checked the spatial ripples left in the air. Humph, do you plan on running for your entire life? Next time Nozama caught up, he planned on using a spell from afar to stop Link. He'd like to see what Link could do then. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to Advent of the Archmage. Chapter 648, Creator's Temple, 1. 
Link was finally able to catch up to Romian's unicorn in his dragon form. Romian seemed extremely weak. Cold sweat beaded his forehead, which was now as white as a sheet of paper. His snow-white unicorn also seemed to have reached its limits. Carrying Ramian and the two demons on his back must have taken a lot out of it. Slowing down behind them, Link extended a claw out and gingerly closed his fingers around them. Finally able to rest a bit on Link's palm, Ramian asked, did you defeat him? Noticing that Link did not even have a scratch on him, Ramian figured that he must have somehow bested Nozama. However, having witnessed the demon's incredible power personally, he had not the faintest idea how he was able to manage such a feat. Not really. However, I was able to figure out some of his weaknesses without taking a hit. That's probably as good as it gets. So, how far are we still from our destination, asked Link. At our current speed, we'll probably reach there in approximately four hours. Four hours? Link estimated that he still had. It should be enough for now, though he would surely be completely wiped out at the end of their journey. However, his current power level was now at level 13, which meant that he was now able to fly even faster than before. However, maintaining top speed in the air would tire him out quickly. For now, he needed only to keep some distance between himself and Nozama. Settling at a speed he was comfortable with, Link began flying forward. He was at the moment flying at an altitude of around 30,000 feet in the air. Beneath him, he could see the occasional village and town, as well as a smooth highway which meandered across the landscape. Caravans and lone travelers dotted the road, inching arduously across it like ants. Trees spread out across the land in a lush sheet of green. Though the realm was torn by war, Link could see that it was also a place bursting with life. Beautiful, isn't it? said Ramian. It's all right, replied Link, nodding. Ramian then asked, I could tell from your reply that you and those demons aren't exactly on the best of terms. They called you the Lord of Ferd. Am I right to assume that Ferd is the Dragon Valley that you call home? Dragon Valley? Link smiled. Ramian had probably mistaken him for the Black Dragon King of their legends, where any Dragon King worth his salt naturally had a Dragon Valley of his own. I suppose so. Can you tell me more about it? asked Ramian. Link lowered his gaze and saw that Ramian was looking up at him from his palm. The paler on his face was a side effect of taking on part of the dimensional rejection that was intended for Link. At first, Link had wanted to refuse him. However, seeing Ramian in such a state, Link finally gave in. Since you insist, I'll just tell you what you need to know about the place. He then gave Ramian a succinct explanation of the dominant powers that ruled the realm of firemen before going into some of the wars that had happened there in recent years. Finally, he told Ramian what his reasons for entering the Federo realm were. Throughout his entire account, Link made no mention whatsoever of the mysterious gear that he had set out to look for in the Sea of Void. When he was finished, he casually said, that's the gist of it. It's not something I'm proud to say, but the only reason I entered this realm in the first place was to evade my pursuers. Ramian did not say a word. There was a mingle of caution and curiosity on his face. He remained silent for a long while. Finally, he spoke, quite a coincidence, to stumble across each other despite how far apart our realms are from each other. Link sensed that Ramian seemed to be insinuating something to him. It certainly is a coincidence, replied Link without knowing what it was. Ramian fell silent again. As Link flew on for another 30 minutes, Ramian suddenly asked, may I know what you plan to do with these two demons? I should warn you. Demons are a crafty and treacherous lot. They are driven only by greed and an insatiable appetite for murder. You had best be prepared for when they turn on you if you still intend on subjugating them. Link glanced at the two demons in his claw. Thanks to their sturdy constitutions, both of them finally regained consciousness. Not daring to come up with a retort, the two demons dumbly looked at Link, waiting for him to decide their fates. The sole contract that the two demons had signed with Link meant that he could simply end them with a thought if he wanted to. They now knew the Dragon King well enough to know that he was not someone who would be easily moved by mere words. At the moment, their lives hinged on whether they could still prove themselves useful to Link. 
Link turned away from the two demons and said, the demon that we encountered is called Nozama, Lord of the Deep. Did you notice back then that he looked no more different from you and me, at least on the outside? Yes, if it weren't for his eyes and aura, I would have assumed he was just an ordinary man, said Ramiyan with a nod. He still has another form. When he loses his temper, he will take on the form of a burning seraphim. His combat capacity will receive a huge boost, and he will even be able to travel between realms. At a price, he may even gain the ability to travel through time. Nozama had once revealed his seraphim form in recorded history, back in my realm. In the aftermath of the battle, he had managed to slaughter almost all of the masters in my realm. Even though he too sustained heavy damage, he was able to travel back to the point before the battle even began, essentially negating all the damage he had taken and making it seem as if nothing had ever happened. Ramian frowned upon hearing this. If it had never even happened, how on earth was it recorded in your history books in the first place? I came across a record of the event in a time magician's manuscript. Spells that disrupt the flow of time would always trigger some form of ripple effect on the realm, especially time-reversing spells, whose effects are usually of a more acute nature. Through these ripples, the time magician was able to witness past catastrophes that had escaped the notice of historians in the past. He then left coded entries of these events in the library of the Dragon Valley for safekeeping. In truth, he had received this information back in the previous game world. The Time Magician's manuscript had been key to ending Nozama. With it, the player would be able to seal up all his escape routes through time together with the aid of any accompanying NPCs in order to put a definitive end to the Lord of the Deep's tyranny. Otherwise, he would be able to simply slip back in time, smooth out all the kinks in his plans and storm the Fireman Realm once more with renewed effort. At that moment, Link realized that such a catastrophe might have happened before in Fireman. Maybe, just maybe, the dragons were not the only ones capable of navigating the Sea of Void. Of course, this was all just conjecture. He still needed to prove it somehow. This had all come as a complete shock to Ramian. He stammered, is, is there really someone this powerful? So that's why he's also called the Nightmare Demon. What Nightmare Demon? asked Link suddenly. Ah? Uh? Ramian jolted. He did not expect Link to be able to hear him. Composing himself, he then said, Oh, I was just thinking to myself that Nozama's power is truly terrifying, like something out of a nightmare. Link could tell that Ramian was hiding something from him. However, he did not press him for answers. After a while, Ramian asked, Dragon, do you think your realm will be able to best this Nozama? I don't know, but I will do everything in my power to defeat him. He seems to hate you a lot. I guess you've been a hindrance to his plans for quite some time. Nozama's not the only enemy the Fireman Realm has. The dark red vortex that transported Nozama into your realm back then, did you see it? That's the work of the God of Destruction. He too sees me as a threat. Ramian smiled bitterly. Are you saying that you're being hunted by a god and a legendary level Lord of the Deep at the same time? Looks to me you've got a lot on your plate at the moment. Link laughed out loud. Well, on the bright side, I'm still alive. Ramian then fell silent. However, Link could see that he was deep in thought, trying to process everything that he had told him. He also had a feeling that when the time was right, Ramian would speak to him again. Three hours passed in silence. Suddenly, a massive column of clouds appeared in front of them, stretching as far as the eye could see into the high heavens. What's that supposed to be? Link was stunned by the sight of the cloud wall. His 100 feet long dragon form was but a speck of dust before it. The two demons were gaping at it as well, amazed that something so majestic existed in this realm. Ramian said with a hint of pride, don't just look at part of it. Really take in everything. What do you notice? Following Romian's advice, Link tilted his head back in order to get a better look at the entire cloud wall. Wait, is this? A six-toothed gear pattern was impressed upon the cloud wall. Its design echoed every engraving on the surface of the actual thing in the Sea of Void. It looked exactly like the sketch that the Omerian Pias had provided Link with. There must be a connection between the two gears existing simultaneously in the Sea of Void and in the Federo realm. 
Then, Link heard Romian's voice close to his ear. Can you see it? Behind the cloud lies the Creator's temple. The marking you see before you is the Creator's insignia. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to Advent of the Archmage. Chapter 649, Creator's Temple, 2. Creator's Temple? That moment, Link thought of what magician Dadera had told him about Fidero's history. God created the world and taught humans magic so they could manage the world. Did God really create this world? Link couldn't help but wonder. Dadera was only a mortal. He could only provide Link with some historical facts while Link didn't agree with any of Dadera's opinions. Ramian was different though. He was practically at the same level as Link, and he was very familiar with the Fidero realm. Link had thought that he would get a definite answer. Unexpectedly, Ramian shook his head. I don't know. Or rather, I'm not sure. What do you mean? Link slowed down slightly. He felt that the temple before him would solve a great mystery for him but could also throw him into a greater mystery. No matter what, his understanding of the world would probably be upended. Ten thousand years is too long. It's impossible to prove the ancient legends. Since I could remember, I've lived in the region outside the Creator's temple. Everything I've seen told me that the owner of the temple is an unmatchable magician. You can even say he's a legend. But if you say that he created this realm, I can't give you a definite answer with my knowledge. Evidently, Romian's knowledge was limited too. Link could only continue forward. After flying for more than 20 minutes, Link was before the cloud cluster. From here, all he could see was boundless whiteness. Inside the cluster, there was a tunnel of around 900 feet wide. Enter the tunnel. There's a maze inside. Listen to my orders and don't make a mistakes. Otherwise, you will be lost until you die, Ramian said seriously. Link didn't believe it. This cloud cluster, can keep me there until I die? Ramian nodded. The clouds are only a disguise. Inside, it's actually a principal maze. For thousands of years, people have tried to forcefully cross it, but no one has succeeded. There are more than 1,000 dried skeletons inside. Each one had once been a genius of Fidero. Okay, go left. Link obeyed. If Ramian was right, this maze really could help him temporarily escape from Nozama. As for whether Nozama could get lost, Link couldn't be sure. Nozama as the Lord of the Deep. His wisdom and power definitely surpassed anyone in Fidero. Others couldn't do it, but it didn't mean that he couldn't. Link just hoped the maze could delay Nozama for a while. Go straight for around half a mile. Yes, okay, go right, go straight. Go up, right turn. Ramian kept directing Link. The maze was three-dimensional and unimaginably complex. After flying for ten minutes, Link was unsure about the path he'd gone. If the game system wasn't helping him record, he would definitely get lost here. He had no clue how Ramian memorized it and could determine each move without hesitation. Seeming to sense Link's thoughts, Ramian explained between directions, the scariest thing about the maze is that the path keeps changing at least five times per day. There are no patterns at all. I can find the correct path because the protector's insignia is guiding me. With that Ramian reached out and lifted his sleeve. Link saw a six-sided gear on his wrist. It glowed with a faint mana aura. This way, Link was even more assured. After that, he stopped memorizing his path and just kept flying. Half an hour later, he'd traveled more than 1,000 miles when Ramian suddenly said, slow down. The exit is up ahead, but it's special. You can't exit it easily. You must pass some special tests. Link followed the instructions. Around half a minute later, he turned a corner and a long straight path appeared. At the end, there was a six-sided gear glowing with multicolor light. The gear was semi-transparent and spun slowly. Each tooth of the gear had a different color, indigo, red, blue, purple, black, and white. Every time it moved, the colors would change once. The magic runes on the gear also displayed extremely complicated changes. We're here. This is called the Gates of the True Self. 
When you face it, it will interrogate you about your heart. This may be a very painful process. If you can withstand it, you'll pass through. If not, you'll stay here and hide from the demon. I'll go now. I hope I can see you on the other side. Riding the unicorn, Ramian left Link's dragon claws. He sped up and crashed against the glowing door. Then he disappeared, even his aura was gone. It was as if he'd evaporated. Link wasn't in a hurry. Moving his talons, he lifted the two demons. Did you hear? This is the gates of the true self. Go try. Ignoring the demon's protests, he flicked his finger and sent the two poor fellows towards the glowing door. They fell in instantly. Three seconds later, there were two horrible screams, and two figures shot out from the door. It was the demons. They didn't have any physical injuries, but their eyes were wild, and they shook violently. They looked scared out of their minds. Link waited patiently. After more than ten minutes, Succubus Gamua was the first to recover her senses. She still looked out of her mind, but she could finally talk. Tell me what happened inside, Link said. I saw my end. A more powerful demon cut off my head, sliced open my stomach, tore off my lower body, and ate me. The succubus started shaking again as she spoke. Oh, so that's what you're most afraid of? That's why you destroy your opponents whenever you get the chance. Link was surprised. He didn't think a demon's soul would be so weak. Gamua was at the legendary level. She shouldn't be so afraid of being destroyed. What about you, Gaul? Link asked. I was cut into tiny pieces. I could even feel the iciness of the blade. No, this is too scary. Gaul clutched his head again. Link shook his head. The soul contract between them told him that the two cowards weren't lying. He wasn't impressed, but he was now sure that the glowing door wouldn't harm his body. Grabbing the demons, he flapped his wings and rushed into the gates of the true self. There was a weak flash of light, and then Link felt his surroundings change. He saw firemen. From looks of things, it wasn't present day. Rather, it was the firemen from the game that was close to falling to darkness. The entire realm was lifeless. The earth corroded by darkness seemed to have ringworms or scabs. There was misery, murder, and fighting everywhere. He saw Selene, she'd lost and was stabbed onto a demon spear and taken everywhere to show off. She hadn't died completely. Her blood flowed, and her body convulsed. Her features were twisted in pain. Link saw Gladstone City, which he'd once saved. The entire city was on fire, the river was crimson red and filled with bodies. A few dark elves were still killing, summoning divine gear. There were many similar scenes, all of which he feared the most to see. Even worse, Link had now forgotten about the gates of the true self and how Fireman was now. In his mind, this was happening now, and he was helpless. He could only watch. This is your fear. How will you face it? A voice rang out in Link's mind. Yeah, how will I face it? Link asked himself. Then another voice in his mind said, let fear burn into anger and burn my enemies. And another voice, in that case, what difference is there between you and the demons you hate? Link froze. He quickly answered, I kill for my goal. Demons kill to kill. What is your goal? Link didn't reply. He thought back to the innocent times of learning magic in Creekwood village of Grinth Forest. He thought of the warm afternoon sunlight, the soft chirps from birds in the forest, the villagers' greetings in the morning, and the occasional carriages clattering outside the window. During that time, Link had been the most focused and the calmest. Thinking of that, Link's mind also became as serene as a morning in the Grinth Forest. Without needing more words, the scene before him changed. The hallucination faded, and a figure appeared before Link. It was Ramion, protector of Fidero. Link glanced at his claws. The two demons were gone. Link froze. At the same time, a message flashed in his vision. Mission complete, danger, Nozama, Lord of the Deep. Player received, one energy crystal. Unlocked epic mission, ancient epic. 
Mission content, face the stone of creation, understand the ancient epic, and choose the path you wish to walk down. Mission reward, blessing of immortality, also known as curse of immortality. Do you accept? On the other side, Ramian looked at Link and sighed. I was right. You are the outsider who activated the stone of creation. Come with me, dragon. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to Advent of the Archmage. Chapter 650, Creator's Temple, 3. A majestic-looking temple appeared in front of them as they stepped through the gates of the true self. Its pillars were a few thousand feet high and a few hundred feet wide, with thick clouds coiling around their upper portions and the temple's ceiling. It was truly an impressive sight. When they were inside the temple, Link saw that both sides of the temple were lined with countless statues. These massive statues were all frozen in all kinds of postures. One seemed to be roaring at the heavens, another was locked in a striking posture, with a battle axe held behind his head in his hand. Some of them had serene looks on their faces. The same white columns of cloud wound through the gaps between their arms and bodies, giving them a dignified, almost unearthly air. Even a legendary magician would have a hard time bringing into existence a temple of this scale along with the statues it contained. The entire building seemed to have been given form by hands that had not belonged to any mortal. The two of them then flew approximately 25 miles through the temple. All of a sudden, a round stone which seemed to be glowing with a blue light appeared in the heavens before them. The stone had a diameter of around 16 feet. It floated like an insignificant speck of dust in the air, but Ramian suddenly stopped 2,000 feet away from it. Not at all familiar with his surroundings, Link too came to a halt alongside Ramian. Then, Ramian said, this is the stone of creation, the core of the entire temple. Doesn't it look small and almost within arm's reach? It did seem to be within 2,000 feet away from where they were. Link could probably reach it in a single bound. However, Ramian would not have asked such a question if things were as they seemed. Is something the matter? Smiling, Ramian replied, I can't really put it in words. You'll just have to fly towards the stone to know exactly what I'm talking about. Don't worry, it's quite safe, though the journey may tire you out a bit. I've tried many times to reach it before, but I just never had the power to accomplish such a feat. Setting aside his misgivings, Link began to fly towards the blue stone by himself. At first, he thought he would be able to reach the stone in a single breath. However, after flying for a while, he sensed that something was not right. As he flew on, he noticed that the stone of creation was gradually expanding until it filled his entire field of sight. He turned around and saw that the temple's pillars and its statues, which had seemed to stretch into the heavens back then, were now mere infinitesimal points on the ground behind him. He then looked at himself and realized that he too had shrunk to the size of a grain of dust. Strangely enough, Despite the fact that Link had flown for almost an hour, he felt that he was no closer to the blue stone in the sky than before. If anything, he sensed that he was pulling further and further away from it as he flew on. Before, he was still around 2,000 feet away from the stone. Now, it seemed to be a few hundred thousand feet away from him. Am I flying away from it? Is this spatial magic? But I didn't feel any ripples in the spatial fabric around me. Link could not wrap his head around what was going on. If it were not for the fact the blue stone was growing larger and larger before him, Link would have already lost his will to press on towards it a long time ago. Link flew on under these curious circumstances for more than three hours. At that point, the blue stone had completely filled Link's vision. Behind him, Ramian and the temple were nowhere to be seen on the ground. Link was now under the impression that he was a mere speck of dust floating across the empty vastness of the Sea of Void, with the massive stone of creation looming before him. Whether he would be able to reach it at all was anyone's guess at this point. As he flew on for what seemed like an age, something happened. The blue stone before him had vanished. In its place was a mirror. Ripples spread out across its pond-like surface, before subsiding completely to reveal an unperturbed reflection. With his dragon sight, Link was able to see what was reflected in the mirror. He had the impression that he was looking down at an entire world tens of thousands of miles up in the air. Link soon realized that an entire world was indeed reflected on the mirror's surface. 
On this new world, there were continents and oceans stretching into the horizon. Vast cities sprouted across its continents, boasting majestic, yet peculiar-looking buildings. He also noticed that some of these cities were floating in the air like massive floating islands. Looking closely, Link realized that this world was at the pinnacle of magical innovation, far beyond anything Link could even imagine. If this was supposed to be what magical modernity would look like in this universe, then the fireman realm he had been living in all this time was no more different from an era where people still lived in mud huts and hunted animals with handmade spears. This new realm also seemed to be thrice the size of firemen. What is this place? Could it be the ancient epic at the game's mission was referring to? Link frowned at this. He was still flying towards the mirror. Just as he pondered the scene before him, suddenly, another change occurred. This time, a huge meteorite fell from the sky, landing squarely on one of the largest continents in the mirror's reflection. The meteorite was 300 feet wide. Upon impact, it set off a massive explosion, decimating an entire city within seconds. People from neighboring cities came in from all corners to put out the fire before it could spread any further. Soon, the meteorite's core was discovered in the middle of the crater. Link strained his eyes at it. The core was an unevenly shaped piece of rock with a diameter of 20 inches. Its material seemed to be of extraterrestrial origin. It was mostly white, like a piece of jade. However, unlike most pieces of jade, it was giving off a black smoke-like aura. It then fell into the hands of an important-looking magician with incredible power. The magician brought the stone back to his magical laboratory and began researching and experimenting with its properties in order to draw out its full potential. Finally, a familiar-looking, six-toothed gear was brought into existence by the magician's hands. At this point, something clicked in Link's mind. However, he continued watching the scene in the mirror unfold before him, in order to have all the facts in his hands. In the reflection, after completing the gear, the magician began infusing his power into it in order to test out it. The gear continued drawing power from its maker without any sign of stopping. There was no turning back at that point. In order to see his experiment through, the magician kept on finding new sources of energy for the six-toothed gear to feed on. Finally, tragedy struck. There was a sudden flash of white light before him. When it subsided, Link saw that the magician's entire city had evaporated completely, along with the magician himself. Light surged out in every direction. It seemed to intensify more and more as it spread out. No one could stop it. Anyone who tried to was simply erased from existence. As the light spilled forth, Link saw something resembling a dragon escaping into the void. He then saw a powerful magician sacrificing himself in order to split open the realm. He also saw demon-like creatures spilling out into the void. In this world of infinite light, the six-toothed gear slowly rose up in the light and then vanished into the sea of void. Back in the evaporated city, Link could see that not everyone had perished in the catastrophe. Link saw a young man lying on the ground, unconscious. To his surprise, he realized that the man resembled Nozama. After the gear of light had vanished in the sky, he regained consciousness. His eyes were then glued to the sky for a long time. Link stared at the young man. He then noticed that he was grasping a black stone in his hand. The stone seemed to be issuing a black aura, which continuously seeped into the young man's body. His eyes gradually turned red throughout the entire process. Looking closely at the black stone, Link realized that it was a mass of black impurity left behind by the meteorite's core. Could it be that this is what prehistoric firemen used to look like? But how on earth did all this end up here in the Creator's temple in a realm so far away from firemen? Could it be due to the six-toothed gear? Link grew even more bewildered. Just then, the reflection of prehistoric firemen on the mirror suddenly disappeared. A pristine blue background appeared in its place. Three balls of light floated in it. Two of them were white and black respectively. The third one was completely devoid of color. Link strained his eyes at them. In an instant, the game system tagged each of the balls of light before him with their corresponding labels, the portal of light, the portal of darkness, and the portal of truth. Beyond their names, no other information about them was given to Link. A message from the game system then popped up in his field of vision. 
choose the portal that you wish to enter. Please subscribe to A7 English Podcasts and enjoy listening every day with us. Thank you.